So the big thing about Frame Makers that sets it apart from the other platform fighters is the focus on assists. The game has 19 of them built in from the get-go, all of which change the game in new and interesting ways, and add so much more depth to the otherwise fairly small roster. But not every assist is created equal, and I wanted to go down the list and talk about every assist, what makes them good, and what makes them bad. A few notes on this before I get into things. First and foremost, this game is still not even in early access yet. A lot of this is subject to change, and probably will. And secondly, I should probably explain how the assist mechanics work. In order to use an assist, you need to fill the assist meter. The meter fills as you do damage and costs a total of 50 to 150 damage, depending on the assist. You can't overfill it, so once it's full, you need to empty it to gain more meter. You can call an assist at any time you could perform an attack, so not in hit stun and not during any other attack. Assists come out pretty much instantly though, which can make them a devastating panic option the opponent has to respect. Now that you know how assists work, let's talk about them, what makes them good, and what makes them bad. I think it's only fitting to go from worst to best, and it's funny, because those really were the only two positions I had set in stone when I started this out. For the worst assist in the game, there is only one that I think is truly conceptually flawed. Nico, 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 what did they do to you? Nico's assist costs 100% and creates a circle of light anywhere on the stage, including in the air. While in their field, you gain an increase to your damage and knockback. At first glance, this doesn't sound too bad, but there's two important factors when picking an assist that make it so you'd never want to pick this. First off, Nico is what you would call a win more assist. Nico cannot help you in disadvantage, Nico cannot help you in any sort of neutral state, and Nico doesn't even help in advantage state for that matter. Nico simply takes the combos you were already doing and makes them do more. This might not seem like a deal breaker if the benefit is big enough, but then you have to factor in opportunity cost. Every other assist does affect the state of the game, so picking anyone else is just better. Especially for 100%, you can do much better. There's only really one other assist I think is truly bad, and that's Orcane. Orcane is one of the cheapest assists, only costing 50%, but even at that price point, he's honestly really terrible. Orcane forward air isn't all that great in this game due to the nerfs to bubbles, but it still fills a role in the kit due to its movement. But here, you aren't really moving, so that's one benefit down the drain. The move also starts way too far from the opponent, so they only end up getting hit by one or two bubbles. You can reverse it for the bubble butt hit, but even then you have much better options. Even for the cost, it's just way too underwhelming to matter. With those out of the way, the next assists I still personally would still are clear of, but at the same time, I don't think they're completely useless. They have a time and a place, and can work if you really like them. It's just that you can probably do better with other assists that outclass them. Ain's problem is just that she's really inefficient. While we haven't seen too many of them yet, there's no shortage of quick attacks in this game that can lead to strong follow-ups. However, you have options that are significantly better than Ain. While she does last for a while, her initial range is pretty low, and it's easy to react and avoid the rest of her combo. She's also an expensive 100% assist, when a lot of her competition is much lower than that. She probably has a few cool specific setups, but if it's worth that price increase is debatable. And speaking of inefficient assists, this probably is a bit of a controversial pick, but I think Tankman is not that good. Tankman has become a favorite for a lot of players due to the fact that he's an excellent combo ender at times and kills fairly early. So what's the problem? Well, he's the single most expensive assist in the entire game, costing 150%. Realistically, you're only going to see him a few times each game, and while you can definitely set up combos into him, he really doesn't change the game as much as you'd expect for that cost. It's also super easy to miss, and he provides no actual use outside of combos. While I can't check the actual data, I don't even think this is the strongest assist kill power wise. A kill is a kill, I'd stick with the budget options. Although, there are definitely a lot of specific kill options in this game in general. Joseph extends into the sky, delivering a powerful attack directly above. This move is strong, but also not too strong. I assume the idea is that this move ends ladder combos, but there's surprisingly not a whole lot of those at the moment. Joseph can work, but I think you need to find something less specific. Fancy Pants Man is basically the same as Joseph. He's got better kill power and has huge range. So what's the deal? 
Well, while he reaches quite the distance, he also leaves the entire front of your character wide open, severely limiting his utility. He can work well as an edge guard or a combo ender, but it's not like you can't just do that yourself. For 100%, not worth it. The last character in this tier is a very weird one, because in a vacuum, this assist is broken and should be at the top of the list. Commander Video's assist grants a barrier to your character. This barrier lasts quite a long time, and while it's active, you can build meter to get another one. This effectively means as long as you play well, you can almost always keep a barrier up. This barrier reflects any projectiles it hits back at the user. Effectively, its heroes bounce but without any of the RNG of that move. This sounds like it would be revolutionary, right? Well, this isn't like Rivals where every character has a projectile. In fact, half of the cast does not, and out of the characters currently in the game, including the future ones, this basically just hurts Orcane and inconveniences Weltaro. If they add more projectiles, this could be a serious tool and a broken threat, but as of now, this really doesn't make as big of an impact as you'd think it would. While these next set of assists aren't anything I'd call special, I do think they're all a safe bet. They get the job done even if they don't completely turn the tide of battle. Bard is a very interesting assist, and one of the assists I think is really hard to truly tell the power of. Using the Bard assist surrounds you with a wheel. When opponents touch this wheel, it breaks, dealing no damage but pushing opponents away. This assist is fairly mediocre, especially for 100%, but I do think its versatility makes it u a unique and useful pick. Not only does it have a defensive benefit of getting you to safety, but it can also be great as an edge guard or to make setting up a ledge hog safer. I think Viridian is the textbook example of an assist that is just okay. Using this assist, Viridian reverses gravity, giving you a boost back upwards. This is a bog standard recovery assist that just gives you a little more distance when you might need it. It really doesn't provide much extra utility than that, and doesn't protect you at all, so it's still unsafe. You can attack out of it though, though, so it really does all that it needs to do. For 75%, it's not half bad. While I think 75% may be a little steep for this one, I think Pepino provides a useful role that should be considered. He's another simple combo assist, but there's a few things I think make him quite better than Ayn. Other than just being cheaper, he also has much more range, running across the whole stage to reach the opponent. The opponent can react and jump or roll through him, but he can also catch wake-ups very well. While all that's very good, what makes him worth the price is the fact that he's the only assist in the game that counts as a grab, and thus goes through shields. He's a very nice choice against defensive opponents, I would not count him out. Initially, I felt Weltaro was a fairly underwhelming assist, but the more I play around with it, the more I feel it's a sleeper hit. The thing about Weltaro is that it's a very fast assist without much going on. You hit the opponent once, and that's it. But at the same time, it does everything it needs to. While it certainly can be a below average combo extender, its real benefit lies as a defensive tool, like an invincible DP assist in the traditional fighter. The opponent has to respect your wake up if you have this assist, as it covers pretty much everywhere they can try to attack you from. If this assist was any more expensive, I'd say it wasn't good, but for the 50%, I'd say it's fine enough. Rhythm Doctor is an assist with a high risk, high reward gamble. It costs 100% and has a relatively small activation box, but the real fun begins once you set it up. With it up, a finger appears and starts chanting. After 7 beats, the finger slams down, immediately sending the opponent straight down. For the cost and the setup, this can be a huge gamble, but unlike a lot of the other kill assists, you can be a lot more freeform with this one. You just gotta hit the opponent with the activation and keep them off stage for a free kill. And now, we're to the really good stuff. This is when the assists stop being just decent and start actively changing the game around them. Get ready, because things are about to get chaotic. I may be biased with this one, because this is my favorite assist, but the kid strikes fear into anyone unfortunate enough to be on the receiving end. Running past, the kid causes a strange fruit to slowly drop down. This fruit is ridiculously hard to land, but that's the point. If you get hit by the fruit at any point, that's the stock. You lose. This creates an insane pressure tool that the opponent must respect, lest they die at 30 or something. It's definitely situational, and when you use it, you probably aren't actually going to hit it. But to force your opponent to play around certain death, 75% is a drop in the bucket, all things considered. Nicandrios is also a very basic assist, but he's everything you could possibly want for a cheap 50% assist. He's fast, has good range, can be done on wake up, and extends combos. Literally the only thing he doesn't do is kill. 
There's nothing too fancy about him, but there doesn't need to be. Just stab your opponent and keep them in the combo. Crag is a super versatile assist for both advantage and disadvantage. Creating a platform is a huge deal for recoveries, letting you refresh your jump and get a better recovery setup. This is especially huge for Weltaro as it lets him recharge his gun boots even if he's off stage. While the pillar can be broken, it's not that simple. The pillar also has its offensive capabilities, allowing you to use it to start and extend combos. With how high up the pillar can go, it's certainly possible to cheese kills with a smash attack from the pillar. There really isn't any losing with this one. Birthday is an absolute steal for only 50%. This is the cheapest projectile assist in the game, throwing a bouncing hat forward. If the hat hits the opponent, it pops them up, starting combos. Like Nicandrios, this isn't a super fancy effect or anything, but getting access to a projectile in a game where a lot of the cast doesn't have them can be very useful. It's fast, and the range is great too. Diogenes is the second most expensive assist in the game, costing a whopping 125%. But unlike Tank Man, you get what you pay for. Diogenes will hop around using his hammer, jumping all the way to the other side of the stage. This hammer sets up for combos, and his pot closes out stocks. The main thing that makes him worth the price is just how long he lasts. The opponent can't just dodge the activation, they have to respect him, allowing you to punish their next move. Even for that price, considering you almost always get at least something out of him, he's well worth it. And with those out of the way, that leads us to the final two. These two I have a lot to say about and are widely considered by the other playtesters to be, well, not okay. With them available, they completely change the flow of the game entirely around them. If you want raw DPS, look no further than the Silent. While her attack range is quite small, when she hits the opponent they will start rapidly taking damage over time. Hitting the opponent extends the duration of the poison indefinitely, as long as you keep landing attacks. The opponent has no way to deal with the timer, even if you take damage or die, the timer keeps going. While this may seem similar to Nico, there's a few key distinctions that make the Silent much, much better. First off, the move having an initial hit allows you to incorporate it into combos and setups. The poison having global range means that the opponent can't stop it, and even if you sandbag during the poison, they're still guaranteed to take 30%. It also makes every interaction riskier for the opponent, since they could end up extending their poison timer. It's extremely common to see the silent at the start of the stock rack up 100% or more, and lead to reaching kill percent off of one bad interaction. Now, justified, the poison damage doesn't count for charging the assist, thankfully, but even for 100%, you're gonna see some free stocks with this. Even more infamous than silent, however, is Pizza. Pizza does basically everything you could want an assist to do. They attack with a paintbrush attack that covers a long distance and coats the stage in paint. Anyone who touches the paint will take damage and get popped into the air. The assist lasts for quite a bit too, and doesn't go away when the opponent gets hit. This assist completely changes the entire game when it comes out. You effectively claim a portion of the stage as yours and only yours. It's impossible for the opponent to really do much if you stand in the paint. You can block the opponent's recovery by painting the ledge. You can combo off the paint for insane basketball combos. This assist plays neutral, defends you, and even kills better than pretty much every other assist in the game. It is insanely busted, and considering it's only 100%, it's a game-defining assist. And that's all the assists that are currently in the game. I really do like the assist system a lot, and it provides a lot of really cool depth. I can't wait to see what the other assists like Lady Luck are going to bring to the table. But what are your thoughts on the assist system? Let me know in the comments! Until next time!